buying an RV lot in Florida. The top three things I have learned so far. Number one, you have to come to the table with all cash. They will not give a loan on the property as they would a house. You're not gonna get a 30 year fixed mortgage on an RV lot in an RV community. 99% of all the communities that I've researched in Florida will not give you a loan. There was only one community that I found that they're working with a local bank that will give you a loan. And that was in Port St. Lucie, Florida. It was a class A only RV community. And the max loan they would give you is maximum 10 years uh, long uh, at a 7% interest rate. And as I make this video, it's August 2017. That's an above average interest rate based on the current market. And you'd have to pay the full loan back within seven years. And I do not want a Class A. Those are the biggest and most expensive RVs you can buy. Um, and for me, that does not fit the lifestyle I want. So that's off the table. So that's the number one thing you need to know. You got to come to the table with all cash. And if you're in the RV lifestyle, like me, you're trying to live a simplified life. You're trying to have as much cash available to you as possible because you want maximum flexibility. And you know you don't want you want financial freedom. So, in decent communities that I've researched to buy an RV lot in a gated RV community or in a nice RV community in Florida, and I've been looking mainly in the middle, middle eastern coast, kind of like in the space coast area, the, the, you're pretty much ranging on the low end from what I saw anywhere from 60000 to you know 200000 plus. But it's going to take you at least, from the research I've done, about 60000 minimum to get to buy an RV lot in a decent, nice community. Um, now, obviously, if you're talking about 55 and older communities, you may get a little bit cheaper, but then, you know, you have that restriction of, you know, you need to be a certain age. So the number one issue you need to be mindful of if you're considering buying an RV lot in Florida, you have to come to the table with all cash. Number two, the number one, the number two thing I've learned in researching to buy an RV lot in Florida is these communities have major restrictions. The restriction that uh, most kind of disturbed me was if you buy an RV lot, you cannot just park your car and live in your van or live in your car on that lot. You have to have an official RV. RV stands for recreational vehicle. And when I mean official, you have to have a travel trailer, you have to have a class B, uh, class C or class A. You cannot have a conversion van. You cannot have a, a car uh, or Jeep or anything like that. And that's a deal breaker for me because currently I'm living out of my Jeep Renegade and I would like to buy an RV lot, uh, not move down there immediately, but have it available to me. And I thought when I did go down there, I'll just park my uh, car on that lot. I have all the utilities there, but I don't need to hook up to them. Maybe down the road, I'll get a micro mini trailer or something, and I'll put it there as a home base. But being that I could not do that, I specifically asked that question, that's a deal breaker. And, and most of the communities I've researched, they want a minimum of 18-foot RV. Uh, they won't allow you even some of them, uh, the micro trailers. Now, there was a, a few that will allow the micro trailers, but that was the, you know that's a major restriction. Um, if you want to live out of your van, your car, uh, or if you want a very uh, small micro trailer, that's going to limit some of these communities you can live in. Um, so, because you're dealing with homeowners associations. I mean, you can try to find some type of unrestricted property or buy a little crappy house and park the RV next to it. But for me, that's not what I'm looking at when I'm buying an RV lot, so I'm sharing my experience. So the number two thing you need to be mindful of, these communities will not let you park your van, your car, or whatever, and just live out of that, even if... That RV lot has what they call an executive suite, which is actually like a little mini house. It'll have, or mini shed, it has running water, it can have a shower. Some of these have laundry facilities in them. I mean, they're like 400 square foot, they call them executive suites. You can definitely live in there. It's full kitchen, full bedroom, you know, or full living room, whatever you want to call it. But they will not let you live out of that. There are specific bylaws and ordinances against that in that municipality. So you have to either build a house on that lot or you have to park an official RV. And in many communities, that RV has to be a certain length. Deal breaker for me. Be mindful and ask those questions 
when you are researching RV lots. So the third and final major thing that I have learned in researching and buying an RV lot in Florida is you have to be mindful that you're right back into the fixed fees, meaning these are going to have homeowner association fees. And the cheapest I saw was around $200 and they go all the way up to four or $500 per month. So let's say you're dealing with the minimum amount, $200 per month. Yes, they get you amenities, they get you swimming pools, they get you a gated community, and that may be worth it. Um, and I would consider that, but then you also have to figure taxes, okay? These fixed fees. So $300 a month minimum, because you're looking at, from what I saw in taxes, on a, on a basic one, about $1,000 a year. So just figure $100 a month in taxes and minimum $200 a month in HOA fees, minimum. So you're looking at $300 total fixed, not including utilities. So you're right back up to three, $400 a month fixed cost, including the fact uh, of the issues that I mentioned prior, which is you need to buy this property, you need to bring it, you need to come to the table with all cash and you can't just park your car conversion van. You have to have a certain size RV, which means you're, uh, or an official RV, which may, means you're spending more money to purchase that if you don't already have it like me. And then before you know it, you're right back in what they call the hamster wheel of life where, you know, you're just spending, spending, spending. And really the actuality of you using, using, using it is not practical. Um, now, maybe later on in life, I see myself doing this because, you know, as you get older in life, there is more of a value on a home base. But right now, for my season of life, where I, my major priority is flexibility, is mobility, and is lack, and it's just lack of being tied down and lack of restrictions and lack of fixed cost. These are big negatives that you need to be mindful of if you are looking for RV lots. And for me specifically, I've been looking at RV lots in Florida. I wanted to share my experience. I wanted to share what I learned. As always, do your own research. As always, think for yourself. I am just adding one perspective based on my experience, okay? Whatever life and whatever experience you're going through, I hope it's a positive one. I hope you share what you learn with others, and I hope you stay inspired.